Doctor Octopus Legendary Spotlight. So, previous one was Maw, Endgame Legendaries, you know, not stuff you need to rush towards, but stuff that once you get, really gonna help you out. Doc Ock, one of them. Now, one of the things that makes Doc Ock great is the fact that the game just lets you know you don't even have to think about him until much later in the game, just like we previously saw with Emmy Maw and some other characters, but to the nth degree. There is no reason for you to rush Doc Ock. There is nothing about Doc Ock that like breaks him through. Good character, great character, whatever you want to say. He is, by definition, an optional endgame legendary. Doesn't impact or change anything uh, as far as what you can and can't accomplish. Just makes things that you should be able to accomplish a little bit easier. So, uh, talking about his availability, we have to talk about the characters you need to unlock him, which is, of course, the X-Force team. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at the X-Force team, and we'll make a little discussion about why it's so uh, obvious that you're not going to want to go for Doc Ock really early, even though the actual team, the Sinister Six team, is a team you're going to probably want access to early. So let's take a quick look. So here's the X-Force, right? We're all familiar with them. They are... Uh, really good war offense team. That's something I like the most about uh, how you unlock Doc Ock is because late in the game, when you start paying attention to teams that are just good at war, whether it be offense or defense, that's when it matters to start working on these guys. Like, the faster you get them, having a team that wins in war is great, but you also, early on, want teams that win in war but also do other stuff, like raids or... Um, <laughs> Uh, arena something else they need to do a little bit more than just win at war in the early game because you're still growing late game that's all you really care about what new characters can i use in war and that's pretty much it so uh, as far as availability um cable and x23 are both in the war store i believe cable has a node but they're both in the war store uh x23 of course exclusive so available but by no means um, someone any individual character you would uh, target one unless you care about pvp x23 does tend to be a little bit uh, higher impact in pvp so unlocking her and getting her to gear tier 9 should be more than enough to get there but you really don't have to go out of your way uh, for the sake of having this team completed early it doesn't make a difference deadpool is an arena character um, and nowhere near the... I don't even think he's top 10 characters to farm in Arena. Um, and he unlocks the Legendary. But he's in the Arena, so after you farmed all the characters you needed to unlock the Legendaries you wanted, by all means, start picking up Deadpool shards. No big deal. Domino, a Blitz Orb exclusive. They tend to do this sometimes. They put a character in the Blitz Orb, they stay there for a couple months, then they put them into the actual uh, the split store, or move them to a node, or whatever. So, they do that with the rescue, they're gonna keep going. So, Domino, you can only get her from Blitz Orbs, uh, period. You can't get her from the Blitz store, nothing else. So, you gotta Blitz, right? Sucks. Uh, and there's a chance you don't get any. There's a chance you open 10 and get zero, there's a chance you open two and get 10. You never know. So, because of that, just that, and yes, I did skip Negasonic, but because of that, like, None of these characters are a priority. In addition, none of these characters are really good at anything. Um, except War Offense. And you need the full team. And they need to be pretty strong. So there's really no reason to unlock them early and be like, yay! They're not going to do much. Um, and then we have Negasonic, who, of course, for those who aren't aware, Doom War 1-9. Level 70 plus. Very specific teams required, I believe, in order to just get to her node after you've gone through the ridiculous requirements for 1 three through 3 and 4 through 6, I think you need, like, Wave 1 Avengers, uh, Shield characters, or uh, Fantastic Four to 3-star her node to farm her. Um, all of those, any of those teams, are not necessarily teams you really want to work on early. So, and if you did, it wouldn't even help because you got to be level 71. So she is one of the furthest and hardest to access character nodes right now. 
Uh, and sure, when you get her, you could farm her with more reliability of Domino. But it makes more sense to me that if a player started today, they'd probably end up with a ton more Domino shards or a five-star Domino accidentally before they even were able to farm Negasonic Teenage Warhead. So that's the team. Team's great. We know that. Absolutely no problem there. But you're just not going to want to access them. Like, just wait. Get your free shards from your premiums and your orbs and your, you know, everything as it comes out. Pick them up as they come and move away. No problem. They're not a high priority farm. They are available, just not early, which is one of the reasons why Doc Ock is so very clearly not a high impact and target farmable character. More of an end game, might as well work towards this character kind of guy. So, back to Doc Ock. Doc Ock is good. Uh, actually, Doc Ock is one of the most fun characters I play with. Um, and if you've ever fought against a Doc Ock in war, you know that if you have a really strong Doc Ock and a really weak Sinister Six team, Doc Ock still keeps them alive and strong and keeps them going. So he really does help the Sinister Six team, whether it be the, the OG one or the newest two characters, Swarm or Electro. Obviously, Swarm and Electro benefit more from being around Doc Ock. Duh. They're new and they were released with him. But what he does for that entire team is turn them from a mediocre team that unlocks two legendaries into a pretty reasonable offense or defense war team that can do a lot. Sometimes I've used my Sinister Six team with Doc Ock to beat um, the Marauders with Emma. You know, based on where they are and where their power is and where you are, they have a lot of usability. They're like a Swiss Army Knife team. And that's one of the cool things about him is he's a Swiss Army Knife legendary with the team that you may or may not have worked too much on. Uh, you can start getting value later for a team that previously you may have said, well, I'm only going to use them to unlock legendaries and then kind of leave them on the bench. Now they at least have some value. Uh, let's talk about uh, ISO 8s real quick. I don't think there's many options here. Uh, so one of his abilities doesn't attack, right? Um, so we, we clearly know Fortifier is useless. Uh, and then his ult hits everybody. So Raider, Skirmisher, and Striker are great options. And his basic hits one person, making Skirmisher and Striker good options. So if you want to damage on Doc Ock, that's okay. Doc Ock does, however, when we look at his kit have a lot of potential for healing, both on his team and off of his team. So I like healer on him for a lot of reasons. He's not that slow. Um, he's healing kind of passively. Uh, yes, a lot of his heals are in the form of regens, but with healer, uh, some of the time when he gets blocks and stuff, it makes a big deal. I like healer. Uh, I also understand skirmisher or striker. I think Raider is not particularly great on him, but your mileage may vary. I just don't think you're critting too often with him that it makes too much of a difference. So Striker, Skirmisher, decent options, especially if you want a little bit more control when you're controlling him. Healer is more of like the defense, I want to click auto kind of uh, ability. So let's take a quick look at his tier fours. Master Planner, and for the record, uh, I'm going to tell you something now. The reason all of my abilities are tier 4 is because of Sinister Recharge. Uh, what the person that you summon with the ability, which we'll talk about, but uh, emulates Doc Ock. So if this was 4443, it would summon a character that was 4443. So at 7775, much like Sinister's clone, uh, it, the copy it makes has these abilities. Think of like Hela's uh, uh, Greg, you know? Uh, Sinister, you have to have that ability to get plus one on all of them. Here, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't matter what your Sinister Restarge is. It needs to have all of these. So, that's why I did it. Also, I kind of liked these abilities, and I thought that they were worthwhile. So, I'm just letting you know, you don't have to, but again, I've already said he's kind of an optional character, so in for a penny, in for a pound. Master Planner, uh, on turn, if charged, apply one deflect, plus one speed up, maximum of five to self and all adjacent allies, regardless of, uh, you know, Sinister Six, lose one charge. On block, heal self and all Sinister Six allies for 10% of this character's max health. In war, heal for 20% instead. 
And then it's a whole bunch of in war, offense or defense. Uh, I'm not reading it. It's too many words. Just too many words here. I will say, though, at tier 4, um, you get plus 15% damage to him and chargeable Sinister 6 characters with tier 4s. Uh, so that's really just if you like want this team for war, offense or defense, this is going to help. Um, all of these other abilities are just good. But as far as tier 4s are concerned, this is a war exclusive ability. And since he's good on offense and defense, and he brings the team up with their value... Uh, it gets better if you're using Electro and uh, Shocker. Uh, Swarm. Swarm. Sorry, guys. I always forget. Super villain. <laughs> Superior villain. Sorry, I'm wrong. Attack all enemies for decent damage. It, you know, it goes up 60%. It's a big deal because, like I said, it's attack all enemies. So even if you're using them in raids, that 60% is 60% damage times the number of people it's hitting. So I always like the giant AoEs. Uh that give a decent chunk of damage on tier 4 because it's a lot across the board. Flip two positive effects to negative effects. Each target has all negative effects prolonged by a duration of one. No notes. It's very simple. Uh, again, it's just damage, but it's a pretty decent chunk of damage. Relevant. I like it. Uh, Sinister Recharge. Again, I don't have enough time or crayons to explain all of the things that this does or doesn't do. I will be very quick. Uh, the tier 4 applies uh, an extra charge, which is relevant for Electro and Swarm. Uh, and therefore, if you're using those characters, it's great. If you're not using those characters, it doesn't matter. But since you have to tier 4 it to get the version of the character with, that, with their special at tier 4, it's not useless. Basically, it summons a character from this list right here who's not there. You have a Shocker? Yeah? It'll summon Vulture. You got a Vulture, it'll summon Rhino. You got a Rhino, it'll summon Green Goblin. You have none of them, it'll summon Shocker. You know, like, it, it's very simple. We thought it was very worded, confusing. And then there's crazy little interactions that happen with it. Um, like, if you clone us, I have an entire video on that. Feel free to check it out. Um, <laughs> and then if that character exists, give him 100% turn meter. So they just go again. Uh, apply three regeneration to self and all allies. In war, it's two turns. Cool. Just to show you the summons, um, so these guys are about 60, 70k, and you can kind of click through to see all of the powers they all get. You'll notice that they are all 7775 because all of my abilities are 7775. So you should be able to run through them, uh, and you can even kind of track a little bit. You can see their stats. They're not terrible summon characters compared to some of the other summons. And then usually you can do this and cause other crazy problems. So you can see like the Mysterio gets a Mysterio that summons the Mysterio that's a Mysterio. Uh, crazy. All this stuff is crazy. Uh, this is probably one of the most confusing abilities we've seen in a while until we used it. And then we're like, oh, this is easy. He just summons a dude. So we were speculating for nothing. Uh, definitely worth tier 4 though because all of the characters... Uh, who you could, Sonic Dissonance, Fight or Flight, Furious Charge, Burning Rage. All of these abilities are going off on turn one, except Rhinos. Um, so whichever character is coming out, and you're never, trust me, you're never summoning Mysterio. You, like, that's never going to happen. He's so down the list that there's no reason to make that what happens. Um, like, all of these abilities are the ones you want to happen first and foremost anyway. I really want him to get the maximum energy and the maximum turn meter and all of the Sinister Six allies to get offense up. You know, like, you want this. So that ability is absolutely worth tier four. I don't want to go into any more of that. Uh, and then Tentacle Slam is the basic. Attack pro uh, primary target for it's like, uh, I believe it's 260 and then tier four is an extra 60. Apply slow for two turns. Attack cannot be dodged. Good attack. So uh, that's it. If I had to give Doc Ock a rating, I would give him uh, roughly the same rating I gave Ebony Maw. Give him a B B+. Uh, I don't think that you have to go out of your way to get him. I think that what he does for his team is very good. I think that there are situations where Doc Ock is incredible. You notice I have a gear tier 14 Doc Ock. I used him in Dark Dimension 3, so he has a lot of value. But I also think that if you go through the entirety of the game without ever unlocking Doc Ock, uh, you will literally lose out on nothing. They are, he is a legendary 
that is not required to do anything. Uh, I think there's some stuff that makes it a little bit uh, better than others. Um, but as far as a legendary, he's somewhere... He's like worse than Ebony Maw, but not by much. Uh, and that's really not even Ebony Maw. That's The Black Order is such a good team, and comparatively his team is okay. That kind of thing. So, uh, do me a favor though. Comment below and let me know, one, if you have Doc Ock, because unlike many other legendaries, people are lukewarm to Doc Ock because of how you unlock him and what he does. It doesn't really matter. So a lot of people either skipped him, didn't care about him, you know the drill. Let me know where you stand on Doc Ock, if you have him, if you fight against him, do you hate seeing them on war offense, uh, that kind of thing, or war defense. Where do you land on it? Um, how do you feel about bull cut Von Crazy Glasses? Anyway, have a good night, have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.